a service of CNC Worldwide. The Daily is a service of CNC News and Jib Jab Greetings. I'm Bud Lowell, and your full AccuWeather forecast is right across the top of all of these CNC local news pages. We've got a couple of stories involving the University of Rochester leading the news today. A small subterranean rodent called the naked mole rat has something unique going for it. As a species, they don't get cancer. And two researchers at the University of Rochester have discovered why. They published their findings this week in the journal Nature. Authors Andrei Selyuanov and Vera Gorbanova say this could someday lead to new cancer treatments for people. Selyuanov and Gorbanova found mole rats are protected from cancer because their tissues are very rich with a high molecular weight version of a compound called hyaluronin. Our cells, and apparently all other mammals, have a different version of hyaluronin. The biologists spotted this when they noticed a gooey substance from naked mole rat cell cultures was clogging up their equipment. Cell cultures from other species didn't do this. They figured out what the goo was, and in studying it, they found that mole rat cells did become cancerous if this more complex hyaluronin was removed. After this eureka moment, they identified the gene called HAS2 that makes the mole rat's hyaluronin different. Next, they're going to test the compound in mouse and human cells to see if it prevents the uncontrolled triggering of cell growth mechanisms that causes tumors. Human hyaluronin is used in anti-wrinkle and in some arthritis treatments, so there's a possibility of someday treating or maybe even preventing cancer in humans. 200 physicists and optics researchers from 20 different nations have been spending this week at the University of Rochester for the 10th Rochester Conference on Coherence and Quantum Optics. The university has been hosting this meeting every six years since 1960. It deals with some very cutting-edge research. It feels like quantum computing, building computer chips using light instead of electrons, and even gets into cloaking technology into the Star Trek realm. Optically cloaking a solid object actually can be as simple as an old magician's trick. U of R physics professor John Howell rigged this up, and his sons Benjamin and Isaac are demonstrating in this video. If you want to find out how to build one of these gadgets, you can do it for about $150. It's on the University of Rochester's website in the newsroom section. New York State and Eastman Business Park have an agreement they say will protect businesses there from being sued for any environmental liabilities left behind by Eastman Kodak. With Kodak's gradual exit from the photographic film business, the former Kodak Park complex in Rochester and Greece has been repurposed into Eastman Business Park. It's still one of the nation's biggest industrial parks. It currently houses 35 businesses with about 6,000 employees, along with Kodak's remaining people. But Kodak's decades of manufacturing film left chemical contamination on that site that is still being dealt with. A fear of being stuck with that liability could have kept new businesses away and even been an incentive for the current tenants to move out. To make sure that doesn't happen, Kodak and the state have announced a $49 million trust fund. It covers the settlement of any future environmental liabilities that may be brought. Kodak will pay to establish the fund. It will cover the 1,200-acre Kodak Park or Eastman Business Park itself and the Genesee River. The deal becomes effective next month. Democrats in the Monroe County Legislature want a ban on hydrofracking on any county-owned property. The State Department of Environmental Conservation and the State Health Department are still grappling with a long-awaited report on whether New York should allow the controversial process or ban it. It has massively expanded the nation's natural gas supply, but disposing of the wastewater that comes back up from the wells is an ongoing environmental issue. The Democratic Party caucus on the legislature also wants to ban the storing or treatment of any hydrofracking wastewater at facilities in Monroe County. The majority Republican caucus has not issued a direct response to this Democratic initiative, but Republican Joe Carbone of Irondequoit submitted a resolution last week in support of a statewide moratorium on hydrofracking, so there does seem to be some bipartisan support on this issue. The jury has resumed deliberations in the murder and arson trial of Webster teenager Michael Pilato on Thursday. They broke for the night Wednesday after some 10 hours in the jury room. 
Closing arguments were held Wednesday morning. Monroe County District Attorney Sandra Dooley told the jury Pilato knew what he was doing when he set the fire and intended to kill his family. Defense Attorney James Nobles said the question should be, why would a 15-year-old boy set such a fire? He said Pilato was acting under a recognized psychiatric condition called extreme emotional distress. The defense has never denied that Pilato set the fire, which killed his father and his two brothers. They're hoping the jury will consider a lesser charge than second-degree murder. Greece police are looking for this man who held up the Citizens Bank branch at Northgate Plaza on Dewey Avenue Wednesday afternoon, and they say he matches the description of the man who robbed a key bank branch on Ladder Road last week. The man showed a note to the Citizens Bank teller demanding money, then he fled on foot. Anyone with information is asked to call 911. The wheels are still spinning in the state legislature in Albany as they work with the end of the session coming up to try to deal with all the legislation yet before them. Governor Andrew Cuomo and the leaders of the state legislature did reach agreement on a casino gaming plan for New York. They call it the Upstate New York Gaming Economic Development Act. It establishes four major casino resorts in different regions of upstate New York. At a formal news conference Wednesday, the governor said it will produce income for both the state and the local governments involved. The quote-unquote casino legislation is about gaming, and gaming is about tourism, and tourism is about jobs. And as we've been talking about for months with the Tourism Summit, we believe there's a real economic opportunity for upstate New York in terms of jobs and tourism. And that's what gaming, uh, the gaming provision is all about. The Oneida and the Seneca Nations have exclusive rights under this agreement to establish casinos in central and western New York. That leaves the Hudson Valley Catskills, the Capital District Saratoga region, and the eastern southern tier open for developers of these proposed new casinos. If the legislature approves this law, it goes to a referendum in the fall election. And police in Geneva now say the man picked up by the New York City Police Department is not one of the four men involved in the Sunday shooting incident and pursuit. He's another man with the same name. Police originally thought that Jonathan Rivera in NYPD custody was one of two fugitives they're still looking for after a chase that began in Geneva and ended with a crash in the town of Phelps, Ontario County. Officers from the Geneva Police and the Ontario County Sheriff's Department went to New York Wednesday, but soon confirmed that it was a different person. That means 25-year-old Jonathan Rivera and 22-year-old Andres Escalera are still being sought. One man involved in the pursuit was arrested after he allegedly pointed a gun at officers and was shot. Another was picked up early Monday morning, walking along Route 14. Links to these and other stories are to the left of the player window, and at the bottom of the page are links you can use to post news and information directly to us. Next news podcast is As It Happens. Updates are as necessary. And I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News.